Hi, hello, hey, and welcome to this episode of Rushed Vibes. I am Jessica Rushed Vibes. Rush, accompanied by David Rushed Vibes. Rush. And we are here to rush it up. No? Mm -mm. Okay. I tried. But I actually enjoy the awkward intro that I do. Why is that? I don't know. I feel like it it lightens the mood. Granted, it's just you and I, um, but it lightens the mood. See, I'm sitting in this very origami position to show off my Jordan logo. I hope the camera picks it up. <laughs> I hope so, too. There it is. There, there. Uh, uh, I'm so bad with the reverse. So that event I worked that I got my Jordans, I also got some Jordan sweatpants. So very, uh, just wanted to show those off. And now I'm going to unpretzel myself and we're going to get into it. And you didn't bring your husband any. I offered you work. If you'd worked, you'd have some No, fresh. I didn't want to work. I just wanted, <laughs> I just wanted the, have, the swag that came with the job. some fresh Jordans and some fresh Jordan sweats. We could probably share these. They're unisex. I, I don't know what that was inferring, but okay. What's up? I don't know. Our last name is Rushing, by the way, not Rush. Is it? Nah, it is. I, I have gone by Rush for years, though. People call you Jessica Rush? Yeah. You're not but the only Rush. But it's actually, I'm the Rush. <laughs> Number one. Okay. The um, Rush. Someone used to call me Junior, an old an old colleague for JR. So they just made a junior. So I thought, depending on a pivot, like a pivot that I went to through, like if I went through a rebranding, I would just go by Junior. You seem really lively tonight. Do like I? you're ready to to talk. Yeah, your, um, your energy is is different. Really? Yeah. Normally you're just kind of like, maybe, what, what do you want to talk about? <laughs> maybe it's because I don't have a drink. <laughs> maybe are you you dry yeah, so this i this is actually for ezra so this will be a test if ezra who? ezra who literally commented i know who it is so why are you <laughs> know who making drinks for you didn't even got me a, you don't make a drink because for like, ezra you don't even have a drink for me because you don't like any drinks you only drink any beer when i work for the brand no. and you have cases in your garage <laughs> But like two years ago, I was what six months pregnant. Like, as was cool and all, slinging, slinging, uh, running a campaign for Heineken Zero in North Carolina. Just like here's my big belly, and here are cases of Heineken. But anyway, dark days. David had posted uh, that we were recording tonight. This episode is going to drop tomorrow, hopefully, and it better <laughs> prayerfully. And uh, he uh, he just asked like people if there were topics that they wanted us to address and Ezra had mentioned NA cocktails and it's the beginning of the year and you know the beginning of the year means like a clean slate because you can't me. yeah you can't get a clean slate in May it has to happen in January so uh, I'm not necessarily doing a dry January I did that last year um, I think I did it the I might have done it the year before uh, I just didn't I don't feel I felt like doing things in moderation so i'm doing like a moderation january um moderation january yeah in terms of just like evaluating my relationship with alcohol oh with alcohol okay. um i thought it was just like moderation across the board i think i might you've been real sometimey with me lately i'm just saying you've been you've been kind of sometime it's been four days <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm talking about the last four days. <laughs> You've been some, Life. been some time. Uh, so just doing like a moderation January, uh, which I think I'll have flow into the year. So like yesterday, I kind of got a little, I won't say worked up, but I got emotional. And I was, I had the urge to go. Was it an emotional day? It was. It was a very. Surprisingly emotional. Yeah, emotional. And then it ended on an emotional note that we weren't expecting. Um and that just kind of, it, it knocked me. So I was like, I'm going to go pour a glass of wine. And then I was like, no, no. 
But then I was like, yes. You did have a glass of wine. I didn't. Oh, you didn't? No, I uh, resisted. You resisted. I resisted and I went to bed because I didn't want to, because I was stressed, because I was emotional. I didn't want that to be the driver mm. in me, in me getting the drink. Um, and even just like that, you know, end of the night, wind down drink. Um, I kind of want to, not that I'm going to stop doing that, but I kind of just want to evaluate like how many nights a week I do that. Um, so just more consciousness. And I also put on a few like stress pounds in ond so actually no i lost a bunch of weight in on why don't you just say the end of the year why you got because i'm why I, you gotta do this whole ond thing I'm, I'm in the liquor industry and that we were that's how we do the quarters we just break it down by the acronym OND. i love saying oh, ond is my favorite because ond is like the most stressful quarter of the year um but lost a ton of weight because i got sick and then Good. just between stress eating and just not working out anymore um i put on like i've put on like six pounds so i'm like uh unless i catch a stomach bug soon which with the kids in school again the likelihood is very high um so i could actually just hang on for a stomach bug no i'm sorry nba threads are lit tonight do you do we need to pause? No, do you want me to just keep talking? No, about myself? we're good. Go ahead. Okay. So Go ahead. between between drinks, so, is the Bucks and the, and the Spurs was a really good good finish. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, between drinks and then I've yeah. also been just kind of moderating my husband <laughs> meat intake. So I'm not going. I'm not going vegan because um, that's not my ministry. But I'm just doing a lot more plant based eating. Uh, and probably just during the week and then, you know, take a break on the weekend, indulge in, in some regular protein, meat protein. But yeah, just trying to reset, but which is contrary to my personality, because I'm also one of those people who's not like new year, new me, new this, right. new this. Like, I'm just like a year is just an accumulation of days. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. There's not. But I guess it's I get, a new it's a new year. It's a clean slate. People like to start fresh when they have clean slates. So if that's what you want to do, if that's how you want to package it, then that's fine. You know, they say, like, I think it's, sorry, I wasn't speaking in the mic. I think it's January 15th is, or 12th, one of the two, whichever one is on a Friday, uh, is classified as Quitter's Day. It's ICE. So all of the resolutions that How you know it's ice because I know the sound of falling mm. ice. Oh, okay. Cause uh, you know, that could be the killer from the pantry. <laughs> yeah. It, the killer is crafty. All right. That's how you become the killer. I'm just I, was, saying. I was in the pantry not too long ago. There's no killer in there. Okay. You weren't just in the pantry though. Oh my God. I'm not. You were in a while ago. I'm just saying, watch out for the kill. Anyway, um, but yeah, it's supposed to be Quitter's Day because that's usually when people give up whatever resolution. I don't do resolutions. Um, Two weeks, yeah. So it makes Smart. sense. But this, because this is where we were starting from. Oh, yes. Uh, it is a mixture of two NA spirits, NA meaning non-alcoholic. So it's a Wilfred, Wilfred's, and they make a non-alcoholic Aperitif, which is like uh, Aperol, Campari. Sure. So I did that. Um, there's another one that I used, Amethyst. Uh, they're based out of South Carolina, Hilton Head, I believe. Mm. And then I added some tonic water. So nothing too fancy, but just something elevated. So mm. nice. That's my my NA cocktail. But shout out to Ezra, I guess. Shout out to Ezra. And if you don't, if you need some beer recommendations, uh, Athletic Brewing has amazing non-alcoholic beers. Like you can't even tell that their their NA, their IPA is really good. Their wheat pale ale, um, mango cart, they have they have a good and their mango cart they make it um, NA as well. So just some suggestions, but I'm always open and willing to talk more because as long as it's beverage related, whether alcohol or NA or even sports drinks, because you know my stint with body armor. Mm. Um, you know, we um we share this this podcast. No no one person owns more of it than the other. You sure? I'm positive. 
I named and, it. And we, we make, you did. We make a lot of decisions together. I wish you would have told me that you were going to be shouting Ezra out at the beginning of this podcast because it's good people. I like Ezra. Do you? But even all over my neck, all <laughs> NBA season because <laughs> freaking Lakers suck. And every time I post about the Lakers, I know it's just going to be Rip. one, two, three, or four down in the replies. Sounds like a personal problem. It is. Ezra said he was going to come up and visit, and you were like, nah. No, he's saying he's saying to land, wherever he lives. Stay yeah. down 85. Yeah, welcome. We're, to we're full in Charlotte. We only know more more visitors. <laughs> stay, in, stay in the South. It's not me. I'm dirty. Hosp- stay, I'm down there with, stay down there with them dirty birds. I'm hospitable. Um, no, shout out, shout out to Ezra. And... and everybody yeah and nba threads shout out uh, to y'all this has been a i mean every week are we i guess we're starting with threads uh every week has been a good week i guess we can uh, communication wise with threads but i've had um i've had a lot of engagement with with just people in i feel like the core community um but then i think just with like new years and posting like what are you doing different what are you trying to do what are your traditions like the holiday weeks has really started some some very interesting conversations and even in this like part-time vegan thing that i'm doing i've seemingly made a new friend and you know she's like, giving me feedback sent me to some people to with suggestions for meals to eat um or make off of tiktok and so it's been um it's been nice. I'm. I feel like I'm treading new water with with threads lately, because Twitter was kind of my place where I would just like post a random thought, um, or complain to a company, or complain to a company, or subtweet, and complain about you. <laughs> but um, I, I'm very intentional about my post on threads, um, and I think a lot of it is just because people will actually respond. Mm. Um, like I can't sub, I can't, I can't like sub thread you no, because you can. people are gonna be like, oh man, Mayor Rush sucks. <laughs> no, they're gonna be like, Mayor Rush, you can do better. <laughs> um, She's ungrateful. So I'm very intentional, but I mean, I think because of how I communicate on threads now, it has me realizing that we all have different personas based off of the social media platform that we're using, and I will say my my ex app formerly known as Twitter persona was very like negative. <laughs> like I was mm. in there to complain. I was in there to, to yeah. eat, uh, the environment that was the environment that was created. And I wasn't really even engaging with people on Twitter. Right. Um, that was like back in my college days, but like Facebook is more like family. Cause I know, you know, aunts, uncles, in in-laws, like, family people are seeing me on um facebook and then instagram was kind of just like we out here here's a picture of we being out here and that's that's it that's how i explain it but threads i kind of feel like it's the multiverse where i can be a little bit of each persona in one place like i can throw up some jesus words I can throw up a recipe. I can be in Aruba all in one place. It's a safe space. But yeah. I'm I'm obviously a big fan. We know. Um, We, I guess we'll do some, I don't know what it's called, mailbag. I don't know people, people gave us topics or asked some questions. Mailbag song like Van? No, please don't. I love Van, but no. Uh, it's my least favorite part of the show. So we'll do that. I, th- I think either in the middle or toward the end. Okay. But um, yeah, this is our, our first episode since since the uh, the interview dropped last week. Mm-hmm. The epic interview. Little little does do many people know we recorded that back in early November. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, so, that thing is old. So we actually haven't recorded for a week. Yeah. So it's good to be back in the chair. It's good to be back. A lot has happened. A lot it's has a happened. new year. It is a new year. 2024. Yep. Um, I'm partial. I love even number years. Okay. I think because I was you born, were born on an even number year 
I'm born on an even number day. I just gravitate to even numbers, which I mean, the options are very slim. It's either even numbers or odd. I mean, I suppose you could throw a decimal in there, fractions, what, whatever. Um, I'm trying not to be all, I don't know. I'm approaching this year very different in terms of, I don't want to be like, it's a new year. So like everything just has to be new. Like, I, I think I'm still approaching it with every day is a new day. And like, I had this thought earlier. Yes, you go into a new numerical year, but who's to say that a random day in July isn't the day that your life completely changes and that's like your new year mm. um a day in september so i think i try to to look from that perspective but a lot has happened with us with mm. our families um with our lives and then just in the world like there's been a lot going on around us going around like in hollywood <laughs> um it's a busy time. It is. Draymond is still out. Yes, he is. Although a report came out that he, he'll be ramping up soon to return. I went to vote for... All-Star? All-Star, and I saw he was eligible to be voted for. Yes. Huh. I found that interesting. What's it? This is a fan vote at this point, so... Okay. I don't think they're making anyone ineligible. I think there might be some sort of... Uh, minutes requirement but it's if there is it's, it's not very high mm. um what you got what's going on with you? Are you i have me doing all the talking well i expected you to carry the episode because i thought you wanted to talk about what you've been watching all day no oh <sighs> y'all okay so i get on social media yes and i keep seeing cat williams mm-hmm I keep seeing his name. I keep seeing him. And I haven't watched him. anything about it, by the way. All I've seen is Cat Williams. So I finally get on threads and I'm like, why do I keep seeing Cat Williams? Actually, I said Matt Williams. Um, I later Googled him. He's actually a baseball player who got divorced from his wife last year. So Matt Williams was in the news too. But um, so I finally post, I say, why do I keep seeing Cat Williams? Mm -hmm. And everyone's just like, he, he said everything. So initially I wasn't going to, I was trying to find a synopsis to break it down for me, but I'm also, because now we're not now, but because we are podcasters and we are, I mean, we're not journalists or news reporters, but we're regurgitating information. I'm trying to be more intentional about hearing it from the source hmm. as opposed to secondhand. So I, I, if it's, a uh, commercial, not a commercial. If it's someone's interview, I will try and listen to it. So, so I did that with, um, Simone Biles husband and his interview. Um, cause I still can't remember his name. Um, I did that with, there was another big interview that I ended up listening to. So I was like, you know what? Y'all, I appreciate the information that you're giving me, but I, I need to just hear it from the horse's mouth. So, um, use my new Christmas gift and my AirPod Maxes. I felt like I was in the nineties with my headphones over my over the ear headphones. You just been rocking the things all day. Mm -hmm. Like you look like so satisfied. I was. That might I be the, in, my my I favorite gift. Things wearing them. I, I didn't even have them on have all day long. And I'm just like on with my big big headphones on. Um, and I was perfectly content. But um. I was like, let me let me figure this out. So Shannon Sharp, this is the first time I've ever watched Shannon Sharp's um, Club Shay Shay. Club Shay Shay. Um, but I, I didn't even know where to find it. I just Googled Cat, Sh Will Cat Williams and Shannon Sharp. Sharp. Um, and then I saw that this thing was two hours and 46 minutes. And I was like, there are 24 hours in a day. I don't know that I have two hours and 46 minutes to dedicate to Cat that's Williams. That's why I haven't watched it. But I, I did, I did. So I had the headphones on cause I knew the kids were going to be around. I couldn't have them listening to, to Cat Williams. 
this interview conversation audio I don't even know what you call it, but um it gave Bilal. Did you ever listen to the Bilal interview that he did with old girl who got sued by Cardi B? <sighs> What's her name? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Tasha Tasha K. Tasha K. Um I was getting my lashes done and Sala was listening to it or watching it on YouTube and she was at like minute 45 so i missed the first half and you know when you're getting your lashes done you're laying there your eye your eyes are closed so you're just at the mercy of whatever you're like the conversation you're having or what you're listening to so i'm listening to this and i was like oh this is messy like i need to go back and watch it from the beginning so like i had finished it went back and watched it but my my takeaway from all these interviews that i keep watching with all of these whistleblowers is Hollywood is a scary place. Mm -hmm. And I take a lot of what Cat Williams says with a grain of salt mm. because just because of his delivery, I think because he's a comedian, he delivers things comically mm -hmm. without trying so even if he's trying to be serious mm -hmm. it comes off as cat williams and i mean yeah. i got into cat williams in high school so like it i know cat williams with the blowout and just like attacking lions but they're really mic stands and like dislocating his hip on stage and whatnot like th that's the cat williams i know uh i love cat williams i've always adored cat williams probably one of my favorite comedians as i've gotten older slapstick comedies i'm not as into that but i still feel, i still have such an appreciation for cat williams like i remember being in dorm my dorm room with my friends and watching um cat so i think he's hilarious some of what he said i'm always like weary about people who know so much allegedly mm -hmm. um that aren't dead <laughs> because i feel like if you know so much like and things are the way they seem you, you they gonna kill you they're gonna mm -hmm. come get you um not saying that i want cat dead that's not what i'm saying but i'm just always weary in terms of like how much of this is actually true and if all of what you're saying is true like what is going on over there um, and the same went with the, the Bilal interview and the stuff that he was saying that the Smiths were doing. Um, I was like, oh, y'all nasty, like nasty, nasty. Um, and then reading up on the Cassie and Diddy lawsuit and getting information from that. I'm like, what kind of. What kind of place is this? And and I guess what also what kind of place is this being Hollywood? Yeah, just just you don't think it's just famous people? I mean, do normal people do that? Like, I just I I mean, I have to base everything off of my life, and I don't do those things. So, so you think only? Do you think these are things that only famous people would do? I mean, I know like rich people do crazy stuff, and I know like middle class people do and I, shoot, I know poor people do some funky things too everybody does things everyone's got their something um like i was scrolling through some there's this like charlotte trash group on facebook that i'm in and somebody was like are there any local swingers clubs and i was just like you just gonna put it out there and then people are commenting like just curious for research purposes <laughs> what kind of research are you doing at a swingers club um so i mean it's like you know it but I think you already expect it from the rich and famous. Mm. And because they're rich and famous, they're, they're given the, they're allocated the space to do this. Um, so I guess that's why I'm always concerned about when someone does come out and is able to speak. It's like, why are you the outlier who's able to speak? Like, what code are you breaking? What, like, what are you gaining 
And you can't be the only one who knows this stuff and isn't speaking on it or like, I mean, Denzel Washington's in Hollywood. I haven't heard him like blast anybody. So it's just like, why you? Denzel mind his business. That's true. But it's like, why you? Why you, Kat? Why now? So you know what my, having not listened or watched any of this, seen maybe like one or two clips. You want to know what my takeaway is? You don't care. No, that's not. I actually do care. Um, normally when you have these out of nowhere, out of the blue, like tell all type interviews where like a number of people are named and flamed. I don't think it's really good for anybody. I mean, it's good for the people who are consuming the information. I don't think I don't think it's good for us because think about it. He allegedly went after or trashed very significant comedians within the culture, Mm -hmm. like who have given us or people the joy of laughter, entertainment, Steve Harvey, Kevin Hart, like a number of people. And other than cat getting you know getting his off what's the what's the benefit what's the true benefit of it yeah it clicks vi- virality everybody's talking yeah, about I it think it's got like nine million views but i don't know i don't like uh, it just seems kind of it, obviously it's messy but i don't like looking at i don't want to see cat in that light Mm -hmm. Right. And now people are probably going to respond and, you know, it's doesn't, I hate that whatever happened to him or however he was treated by maybe people or associates of the people who he, who he named made him feel the way that he feels, um, after all this time. And, uh, I wish he didn't feel that way, but no, I don't think anybody really comes out looking great when stuff like this happens. You just have to be the whole. I mean, like, but it's. I mean, it's it's great Socrates for. And no, I. I'm I'm David Rush, and I'm no, just it's not even. This is bad for human just, morale. I hate to see. Is this part where you start singing "Reach Out and Touch"? No, I just hate to see people I I have admired going after going at each other like that. I see where you're coming from. I yeah. will say I was surprised about this like underground comedy gang that he kept referencing. Like mm-hmm. I I didn't I thought that they were like like their boys. Like, it just so happens that it's Steve Harvey, Bernie Mac, Cedric the Entertainer. Yeah. Um, but I didn't real and it makes sense like there are gatekeepers and every industry is going to have gatekeepers but i think because people are funny and that's unfortunate too it is it is people are gatekeeping but i think i just assumed oh you're funny like you're making people laugh there shouldn't be any like rivalry like i laugh you laugh they laugh that should be it um so to Again, this is assuming that what Kat said is... Bring the mic closer. Just turn it. This is assuming that the things that Kat was saying were relevant and accurate, that this industry, that part of the industry is ugly, too. And yeah. I guess I just wouldn't have assumed that comedy would be ugly, especially because it is such a difficult part of the performance or mm-hmm. entertainment industry. Because to make people laugh is it's it's one thing to just be funny like just naturally like in conversation to be witty that's one thing but to stand on a stage in front of people you don't know the audience in terms of like where everybody's from what everyone's background is so you're just at the mercy of do i genuinely have a talent and can i express that talent yeah so i wouldn't have assumed that an industry that's already so tough based off of audience would be the same behind the scenes based off of like people who are also in the industry too. Like we're fighting each other. I just wouldn't have expected that. Um, And again, we're coming from the perspective of black comedians. So then, you know, always, I feel like anything black, it's always like 
that extra caveat of we have to look out for each other too so then that's also disappointing where it's just like it seems there's one story that cat alleges that steve harvey was coming for bernie Mac's role in the oceans um series and that he said he would even take less and i guess that's i don't i didn't i don't know that there was a demise with their friendship um but cat alluded to that so it's like dang is that true um but again you don't know bernie's not here to let us to, to confirm but um i don't know it just doesn't seem it just seemed like a lot mm. seemed like a lot but i mean you do you do make some points in terms of like whatever cat's been through because in my opinion, Kat's hilarious. Um, even when he's arrested and getting mug shots on a, what seems like a regular basis, he's still pretty funny. I, I think it's worth the watch. Um, cause I think when you watch it, you kind of see that some things, at least from my perspective, don't add up. Um, where I was just like, he'd say something. I'd be like, sir, are you, are you sure? You sure that's how that happened or that's when that happened. But, um, but no, it was an interesting two hours and 46 minutes that I'm not going to be able to get back. Mm. Shout out to uh, Club Shay Shay. Yeah, yeah. Shay, I didn't know Shay. he had a cognac. Uh, you know, he was at, he was probably 20 feet from me at the in-season tournament. Oh, was he? Yeah, he where he was seated. You didn't get a picture? Oh, man. No, he was, it was, it was a good 20 feet away. Oh. He was sitting at the, uh, he's basically courtside, but he was behind the, the table. So you had to like, they had like a little security person. If you oh, didn't yeah. have the right ticket, you couldn't really get onto the floor. So I got a picture of him. It's kind of blurry though. So, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll probably, you know, it was, it was put in the group chat. I think yesterday, I think Mark dropped it in there. So I might, I might watch it. It'd be nice if somebody just put like a highlight <laughs> cut of it together. Which he just said so much. Like you would have to listen to it once and then go back and listen to it again. Yeah. To pull out like the actual valuable nuggets. Um, Cause I really wanted to, to like break down a summary of it. And I'm mm. like, I don't remember all that. That's two hours and four. It's a, it a lot to remember. That's that's, that was a lot. He let mm -hmm. a lot out. Um, But yeah. So there's cat. It's, I say, listen, let me know what you think. Um, cause again, there were some things that were a little questionable, but it is hard for me to take him serious cause he's a comedian. And I think the mm -hmm. natural disposition of a comedian, even when they're being serious is they come off comical. So there's that. Um, you know, you're, uh, your boy, not my boy. Whenever you say no, it's your boy, <laughs> it's, it's absolutely not my boy. No, it's, it's your, it's your boy. It's not my boy. Legitimately. It's mm -hmm. your boy. Um, it's giving his first interview on Monday. Who? Your boy. I'm not doing this. I'm absolutely not doing this. <laughs> um, John the Majors. On your show, Good Morning America. So you know, Stray Hands probably got it. It's He's probably gonna be. It's Good probably gonna America. be. It's gonna air on Good Morning America. Has sure he it's. been um, sentenced? Or did they? Uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't think so or maybe he has i didn't see that let me check so that was something that i did want us to talk about a few weeks back um but i think we missed a recording uh so his case was really tricky um because you had he's not sentencing not sentencing it they're not sentencing until february 6th dang um his case was really tricky because you had evidence from previous incidents that was initially inadmissible for that was not supposed to be used in that in this the current case that he was tried on but his lawyer opened up through questioning opened up and allowed that evidence to be brought in so I realized, you know, you, you, you watch TV shows, you, you hear things like crimes that happen and, you know, someone gets off jury rules, you know, not guilty. And it doesn't make sense to you as a court of public, of public opinion. But I think 
what makes law so complex, especially criminal law, is when you're a lawyer, when you're the judge, and when you're the jury, you are, everything is about the facts that are presented to you. You are not supposed to infer from anything outside of the facts presented to you. And that's very difficult to be unbiased in that way. Yeah. So listening to that case and hearing the details of that case and the, and all the facts that went for just that particular case, omitting the text messages from her concussion and all the other things that had previously happened, him threatening to kill himself, all that stuff. Um, you would assume he should not be guilty based off of the facts of that case. Um, Of course, now you've entered other evidence was introduced from previous incidences. So now you've created like the foundation of, okay, there's, there's a toxic relationship here and there were physical situations that took place that caused injury. So you now there's a pattern of, of action. So I, that was one thing that I took away that I was just like, this is the legal system is very comp. Like you, there's no room yeah. for emotion. <laughs> there's no room for, uh, I see this person's perspective. You're not supposed to see perspective. You're supposed to see fact and, and make your decision based off of that. The right. one thing that I didn't like um, and this is outside of the courtroom because, you know, he's dating Megan Good, um, which yes, could either be a great PR stunt or they legitimately have a thing. I feel like she's she's she might be she's older than how old is Megan Good has been around forever. She's like, um, is it Bianca Lawson? Those two have been like young and old forever. Like you just don't know how old they are, but they've been around forever um so i i but i don't know how i think jonathan majors is close to my age um and i'm pretty sure megan good is like touching 40 she could be older i don't know she looks good um but a lot of people were saying that like oh now you got the your black woman standing by you and then i've heard a lot of talk about well, he should have just been with a black woman to begin with. And then all of this would have been avoided. And that started that, that started a thought process in me where I just kind of got annoyed with this mantra that a black woman will take BS. If, if that makes sense. Like, at the end of the day, it, like, uh, abuse in relationships happening to every race, every creed, like that doesn't make a difference. But I, I, as a black woman don't like this idea that, Oh, if he had been with a black woman, like none of this would have happened. Like she would have like fell in line, blah, blah, blah. Um, because I, I feel like it just makes black women seem like we're, we're subservient. We're conditioned to, I don't know. I'm still developing the thought on how I feel about it. Like I know it, tr- I get triggered when I hear people say something about him. And that's usually like the, a lot of the notion that comes with those conversations. Um, and I just, it just bothers me. Um, and it's just something I wanted to get off my chest, but it's, it, it will be interesting how his career goes. Cat Williams did touch on him um, in his interview. At the end, he was... I can't... I obviously cannot deliver it like Cat Williams, but he was saying that essentially they built him, like the industry built him, so of course they can take it away. Um, And that's why that was taken away from him. Um, But he said that we should have been scared when they told us a man like Jonathan Majors was attractive. (laughs) Because he said he's in a man with a small head and a big nose. He said that man looked like my daddy, and now all of a sudden the world's telling us that this person is attractive. And I was like, "Cat, you're you're very wrong for that." But I laughed. Um, but he was wrong for that. I can't even remember what made me segue to that. But it was just the fact that like Cat Williams felt the need to to say that 
amongst other things. But um, I am curious if his career can make a comeback, if it's possible. Um, you and I had talked about it the other day. Like you got someone, you have someone like Robert Downey Jr. who in the 90s was like poster boy. I mean, he went to rehab. You have a lot of celebrities who have done things and had to go to rehab and had to, you know, rebuild themselves and come back and they were able to come back b bigger and better. Mm -hmm. um, so I am curious if that same grace is going to be given to Jonathan majors. Um, I, I know for a fact, if it's not the people are, it's, it's going to default to because he's black um, that, you know, he, that Avenue isn't granted, but um I do think he is a good actor. I think he he puts on almost scarily like he gets into his character like his character in Creed was I was like you don't even recognize that guy. And then when he um was in Lovecraft, he did a great job in Lovecraft. So, you know, I think the thing with talent is talent can be found. So, you know, there's not just one Jonathan Majors. Like if we look hard enough, we can find somebody. You can build, you can tailor someone to, to take over that, that persona type actor in, in Hollywood. Uh, so I'm curious if that's, since there are clearly powers that be in secret offices in Hollywood that are just like coordinating stuff. Like if that's what they're working on, like are they conducting the next replacement like turning them out like conveyor belts like maybe they got like a picture of you in a folder somewhere and they're like let's make this the guy you don't know you don't know because it's a scary illuminati place over there is there anything else <laughs> You're not talking. I'm just like talking to myself at this point. You're actually just talking. I'm just rambling because you're not interjecting. I'm, you always tell me that I always interrupt you. So I, I make a conscious effort to not do that. You want to speak? <laughs> do you want to ask me something? Do you want to ask me what I think about the 20 minute? diatribe you just went on i'm gonna change this to rushed vibe because i'm the only vibe you just changes the jess vibes because you dominated the interview too with the uh with the fellas because i i talk yeah i think it's unfortunate um the whole jonathan jonathan majors thing uh though apparently if some very loud people on twitter are to be believed uh, a lot of a lot of people in the um, this uh, what do you call it plays like stage mm -hmm. community um, they they've known him to be violent not mm. violent but abuser type toxic you know blow up temper on scene on on set and he even I think he even alluded to it. Like in one of the recordings that mm -hmm. they played in court, that he said he has a temper. So I hope that, I mean, that's not totally uncommon to hear about a Hollywood mm -mm. celebrity or an actor at like having a short fuse temper. Like, yeah, because Tom Cruise is supposedly like, yeah, really mean on set. So it's not, it's not unheard of. But hopefully, if, that's something that he can get under control. I'm interested to see the interview. Obviously, I'll watch it. I I enjoyed Jonathan Majors in Lovecraft and Creed and and Kang and a uh, Kang and uh, Ant Man and, uh, and and Loki. So we'll uh, we'll see. But I think I think he can come back from it. I think it'll take some time. Mm -hmm. uh, and then obviously it depends on what happens with with sentencing. I think uh, it is interesting that Marvel dropped him. Cool. There are some, there's, there's some, some spec on her Charlemagne. The guy said they just didn't like the Kang storyline. So they were like, yes, like we finally got out. So let's just go ahead and drop him. Cause 
phase five is cooked. But yeah, I I think he needs to work on himself a little bit. Mm-hmm. And uh, and you know, make some changes to his personality. Have some experience, some growth. But I I, I think he's uh he's a very talented actor, and I got a lot from his performances. But it's like you said, talent is you can find talent. Mm-hmm. Talent tonight. I mean, we're always hearing about these actors and actresses who seem like they've come out of nowhere, but have been acting Around, yeah. for for a while. But uh, you know, finally get their big break. So yeah, but it's it's unfortunate. It's crazy how quickly things change for him. Mm-hmm. Like he was going like this. His trajectory was like. I remember the Oscars when he and Michael B. Jordan told Angela Bassett like, "Hey, Auntie," like that moment, and then he had that little meme of him that went around the internet. Like you couldn't get away from John the mm-hmm. Matrix. He was walking around that little cup in every all of his interviews. And then, you know, one night, news drops. And then it just changes like that. So, Do you think there's a type of misbehavior that is excused when it comes to the entertainment industry? So to elaborate, like I touched on Tom Cruise. So I believe there's notated fact that he and Katie Holmes, their marriage, there was, I don't know that it's physical abuse, but at least emotional, um, and emotional abuse was, was inflicted, mental abuse, all of that. So, but that hasn't been a blimp, hasn't affected Tom's career. Like people just know about it. Uh, people know that Tom Cruise is very like on set. He's about his business. And it seems more so like it's applauded. Like, oh, you know, when you're working with Tom Cruise, like this is Tom Cruise. So, you know, he wants perfection. He wants the best out of everybody. He wants like his films to be top because he's Tom Cruise. So is it, and then you think about like an R. Kelly and Harvey uh, Harvey Weinstein, uh, these people who, yeah, now a Diddy, these people who are, known for doing things that are not okay in regular life. If you're not a multimillionaire, you wouldn't get away with it. Mm. Um, People know it. It's not like it's a secret. Like people are well aware of it, but, and this is not me saying that Diddy is talented, Um, but is, Diddy is talented. He is, but I'm not saying that. I'm sorry. When I think of Diddy, I just think of like, I mean, a little too steady. yeah, I mean, too, but I mean, I wasn't, he's, he's a very shrewd businessman. He is like yeah. I, one of my old bosses, even before, like he just, he's always been like that. Like one of my old bosses told me she went to Howard, they had class together and he was cheating off her test. Like that's the story I'll always remember. Um, I can believe that. I'm not gonna say her name cause I don't want his people to go after her. Like I'm not trying to, I don't think nobody says about him cheating on the test. Um, but it just seems like abnormal behavior is tolerated when you are at a certain level. You don't necessarily know that. I don't know if it's just financial, if it's position based, but you know, you think of these guys who are, can I, can I answer your question? Yeah. Yes. Okay. (laughs) Well guys, that's an episode. I don't want you to continue to like struggle with that. It's very simple. Yeah. I think it, but with yeah. that, does that take away from the talent? Because if we reference a Jonathan Majors, per se, mm-hmm. you've got this person who's known to have a temper, but yeah. you're playing you're, you're playing characters. Your, your, your job is to change your persona. Mm-hmm. And if you think of the type of characters he's playing, you, you know, he was in Creed. He was in... Um, the Kang is... These are not gentle loving characters right these are characters that you need to have something within you to exude that so is there a justification that because and I, i'm using justification loosely because i'm not saying you can go and beat anybody and then oh well 
they're a performer, so they should be able to, right. that's fine. But is there an expectation that to be able to perform in this capacity, that has to be within you? Does that, does that question make sense? Does, like my dad used to always say, which this isn't relevant. I mean, it, it, this is complex, but like, if you're an actor and you're always playing like a cheater, you're always playing a murderer. Like, like that's like Michael Douglas. Yeah. Like there's th the reason you can play that so well is because that is in you to an extent. Um, so it, I guess I wonder if you're able to play a conqueror who is okay with killing populations of people in different galaxies again this is extreme um is there some kind of justification that oh he's got a temper he can be a little bit violent but that's why his work is so impactful i think what you're able to get away with is directly correlated to your value. So would you think that people go out of their way to make themselves more valuable so they can get away with certain things? Uh, I think people, if we're speaking strictly about Hollywood, I think they just want to be as successful as possible because the more successful you are, the more money you make, the more security you get. I don't know that it's like, oh, I got to get, I got to get an Oscar so that if I slap my wife, I can still work. But I think that's just the goal is to be as successful as possible, especially in that industry. Um, and then maybe for some, the ascension of becoming successful gets to their head. I would imagine it's, it's hard for it not to magazines, TV shows, you know, trending topics online, like it take, I think it takes a very special person to not let at least some of that get to them. And did that play a role in Jonathan Major's case? Probably sounds like it from what I've heard. Um, but again, the stuff that he was found guilty on versus the stuff that he wasn't, I think if he was, if he was like valuable, like he was super duper valuable, um, I think, I don't think that Marvel would have dropped him. Then they dropped him awfully quick. Like, <laughs> it, like it wasn't even, phone. they had his number. Yeah, they had it. They had it. it, in the, pulled up they, had it they had it in the drafts. <laughs> so I think they had decided a while ago that they weren't going to, but they didn't want, I mean, for whatever reason, they didn't want to do it during the, um, during, during the trial. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's, I mean, that's kind of, that's kind of how, how life is in general, right? The more people, you know, the more, the more favor somebody owes you, the more you can, can kind of get away with stuff. The more likable you are, the more people are willing to maybe give you a second chance mm -hmm. um, or not believe, look the other way. Right. Um, so, yeah, that's my, that's my thought on it. But it's been almost an hour. We've been a little less structured than we normally are. Although so never, you weren't talking. No, you were you were speaking, and I didn't have a chance to talk. But I did want to get back to the the threads questions, the topics that I, I, I feel like to, I didn't get to proof them. So I'm no, anxious. I'm just going to pick some. Okay. Um, did you get a lot? I got a few. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to pick these at at random. Oh God. Um, first one to say, if y'all know what's good for you, don't talk about Cat Williams. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> um, so Detroit basketball. Hey, said, uh, that's my, that's my guy right there. Said he'd be interested in hearing more about what it's like these days with balancing family work and your role here as the first, <laughs> the first couple on threads. <laughs> um, looking forward to a new episode either way. So, 
I don't know about the first couple on Threads thing, which is obviously, um, thank you for that. Uh, but you know, I don't, I don't know that Threads has really added any difficulty to what we do. For me, I'll say, uh, because I see it as something that we kind of engage in together, mm-hmm. albeit mostly individually, but it's still like like a, a joint effort, so to speak. Mm-hmm. So it's not like it's just me on my phone a lot and you like not knowing what I'm doing or like, oh, he's on the phone again. Like, you know why I'm on my phone. Like, you know what I'm doing. And before the holidays, like a lot of times it was probably responding to something that you were trolling me about. So uh, I don't know that threads is really, obviously it's, it's impacted. It's changed the dynamic a little bit, but I don't know that it's fair to really assess it right now, just because like the last couple of weeks have just been crazy. Like our daughter's been home for, was home for like two and a half weeks. And we've had some some changes here within the household that that have kind of adjusted. So on the surface, it'd be like, man, like it's crazy, like life is chaotic. But I think it's more of we're in a transition period, mm-hmm. and it's just a matter of of settling. But I mean, having a family is <laughs> is just is tough in and of itself. Um, Threads has actually been a bit of a release for me from the stress of work and stress of parent parenting uh, and even, and even marriage. Like if you're not feeling me or whatever, it's like, okay, well, at least I got these people I can t- talk basketball with. And if I'm not feeling you, I'm sure you can try if you want to, to sub thread me. <laughs> okay. See if the people stand for it. But no, I, I think it's been, <laughs> it's, uh, it gets tiring after a while. Like last night, we just like went to bed. Um, you went to bed first and then I, I came, um, after I finished eating, uh, it's, there are times came where to bed. <laughs> I came, I came, I came to bed. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I had I to, came, I, I came to bed. There are uh, there times, there sleep. are times where it feels sort of like a part-time gig, but it, it, it's fun. Mm-hmm. Like it, it's never felt like, it's never felt like a, a bane. Mm -hmm. or anything and meeting people and it's it's fun it's it's really it's really a juggle it's not it's not difficult um because usually like a lot of the activities at night when the girls are like settling down anyway so you know it's something that we we do together most nights like i'll come home from out somewhere and just as already has a basketball game on i'm like all right like we're it's it's lit so I, th- I think it's been great, but uh, I mean, it's definitely been been a juggle. This is probably the most active social media wise I've ever been, and I'm I'm active on social media, but th- because it's conversational, mm-hmm. it, it it I it does. I won't say it takes a toll, but it does require intentionality. Sure. Um, being you know having a family that's that's especially i would say this time of year is probably not the best time of year to have to assess uh just because like you said it's it's the holidays we had our oldest home for nearly three weeks i mean i had to listen to taylor swift every single day or sia or or dua lipa i've never seen i sure do a cartwheel i've never seen so many cartwheels in my life it was so overwhelming. Like I had to keep talking myself off the edge. Like you are a good mother. Like you, you do love your child. You love, you love your kids. They're just, you're human and you're, you're going to the edge. So like you said, threads did become an escape. It was, yeah. it was a nice place. I don't know. I feel like, you know, those shows where like it's, it almost threads almost feels like virtual reality sometimes. Like mm. you feel like, there's this big conference room or this big glass office building. And when you open the app, like you just go there and it's like, Oh, my friends are here. Um, I know I, I probably sound crazy, but like sometimes that's how I feel where it's just like, 
in this moment i can go see my friend like yeah and i i can i can have a quick conversation i can post stuff i think the what i've i won't say struggled with but like now that work is back in session full time everyone's back it's like yo post something on threads and then you have to go do work and and then everyone's responding to it and it's like fomo like wait wait <laughs> wait for me like i'll be right there I like yeah. i want to be part of the conversation um but it's it, it's fun i know the other day i had to explain to our oldest i was i had opened the threads app and she said oh is that nba threads and i said no it's just threads and she was like well where's nba threads and i said well nba threads is just a part of threads and she was like i don't get it so then i had to explain to her that threads is like a city and nba threads is like a people. neighborhood oh neighborhood in the city and, and she was like oh so daddy's mayor of the neighborhood and it was the biggest mistake telling her, like jokingly telling her that you are the mayor of NBA threads because that's always like her reference point. Um, but after I broke it down to her like that, I was like, you know what? That's that's kind of how it feels. It, like it, It's weird that a cyber place hmm. feels like a place. Um, yeah, it doesn't make it makes no sense to me. But but no, it, it's fun. I, I definitely try to toggle the line of I don't want to be in my phone too much, especially around the kids. Like I still like it doesn't matter if it's the 57th cartwheel. Like I still want to s- stop and look. Um, or if somebody is doing a dance that's to a two minute long song and requires me to watch the entire thing. Like I still want to try and give my undivided attention. Um, but it is, it is nice. And like you said, it does kick off a lot of conversation happens later in the day. Mm. Um, so that is, that is nice. Like I do feel like I've fallen off a little cause I haven't done my roll call, um, in a couple days, but that's just cause I was going through some stuff. Um, next, next is from CL, CL smooth. X, I'm assuming is how you pronounce it. Um, out in uh, Chris, Chris L. Oh, out in uh, Allen Cali. Yeah, I feel like you made that more complicated. I did. Well, I didn't go to the profile. I was just reading reading the the okay. handle. Lay it on us, Chris L. Smooth X. Okay. Um, how do you guys throughout the years maintain a strong friendship throughout your marriage? That's the assumption that we have a strong. <laughs> <laughs> we put on we put on a good front this is all fake we sleep in separate bedrooms we don't even live in the same house i'm kidding um how i don't know i think we just do we our relationship is weird as in it shouldn't it's sh- like the odds were really stacked against us like we shouldn't work stacked against me um but we do i think Number one, even though like David drives me out of my mind seven days out of the week in some capacity, like he's still my best friend. Um, oh, and <laughs> don't and cry. <laughs> far from nope, here. Don't cry. Um, and so it's my slicing onions in there. It nobody's crying sure. you are okay <laughs> to you no. um and even though like i said he and i'm i know i i know i stress him out i know i annoy him but like he's still the person that i want to just share everything with moments fun times um tea like if on a regular basis i i have to consciously not say girl not that I'm calling him a girl, but like that's just my like girl, you you don't you won't believe what happened. But we I, I, I don't know that I can really even articulate it. We just have we're just friends. We're and it's not even one of those, oh, we started out as friends. Like we just we're we're just genuine friends. Like we laugh together, we get upset at each other together, we you know, we cry together when the outside world someone out there hurts us like we bring it to each other and like we're there for each other um we've built a family together so i think 
we just desire to win together. Um, but we are, I don't know, maybe you answer it because I feel like I'm not doing it. I'm not no, saying it's it. horrible. Yeah, I thought this is like catered, <laughs> this is a tailored for you question type of question. Is it? I don't know. Mm. Um, I think being in <laughs> intentional <laughs> um, is, is a big part of it. Because um, I don't even think what was the actual question. Oh, you get to recite the question. I think as maintain a strong friendship there. Yeah, so it's just being intentional. Like, um, it's real easy. Like after you first get married, like you want to do everything together, and you know it's honeymoon phase, and then um, that kind of fades away. And as more things get introduced into your life, jobs and friendships and kids. Um, it becomes really easy to forget that it, it becomes really easy for your relationship with like your partner or your spouse to become transactional mm. um, or procedural. Like, all right, we wake up and we still have, I mean, um, yeah, we have seasons where we're like just going like this, passing each other. It's like, all right, we got to get this person here. I got to get that person here. Are you picking them up? I'm picking them up. Okay. Like, Hey, this trash needs to go out. <laughs> like it's really easy for, life to become like that and you have to really be intentional about no wait a minute like this person is more than just an object like they're my they're my friend and they're still in there objectify me regularly yeah absolutely um <laughs> no shit <laughs> look god didn't give you all that to not be praised all right look i'm just doing my duty anyways i see you broke my my train of thought you were talking about like not being yeah, like I mean yeah because I mean you're still I mean you're still evolving right so there's still so much more about you that I want to know even now at almost ten years having been married ten years 14. yeah I did the math this year yeah ten years like the other day I was like what was I doing ten years ago and then I was like I was preparing mm -hmm. to break up with David <laughs> yes it's true. That part of the story y'all will get later. But then we'll I put that we'll put that one behind a paywall. But then I did the math and I was like, ten years ago we got married. Like this is our yeah. tenth year. This is our decade. Ten years, baby. You and me. It's crazy. But yeah, it's just it's it's just being being intentional. Um, still doing fun stuff. Still being silly. Uh, still wanting to surprise uh, her. Like it's. I won't say it, it's it hasn't been easy, but it hasn't been the most difficult thing for me. Just like Jess said, because we've always been we started as friends uh, and, you know, we've been through some pretty trying things together and we've always been able to to lean on one another. So I think it's made the foundation of our marriage like rock solid. So even when we've had things that have have shaken us, we've at the end of the day, we've been we've been solid. And so. Yeah, man. I say just never stop dating your spouse. <laughs> like just because y'all are married um, doesn't mean you can't still date each other. When was the last time we went on a date? That's not the point. So do as I say. <laughs> we're about to go on a date tomorrow. It's a double. That's how we started dating. No, we went on a group date and you talked around me and not to me. Also, that's not important. So. Yeah, so. That's that would be my answer. Next question. Next question. Enjoying married life with children. You don't. <laughs> I'm kidding. You just have to get rid of the kids. You know, <laughs> I'm also kidding, but you do have to get rid of them. This was interesting because I think kids. This is going to sound weird, but I think they like become part of the marriage. They do like because they're a product of the marriage. Yeah, like so marriage to me, though the majority of when I think about it, it's you and me. Like it, they factor in. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, we we have been pretty fortunate the last couple of years. We we've been able to have a nanny, um, so it's easier for us to like plan. Like, hey, we're gonna you know go out tonight. Uh, we'll have the nanny work late or we'll have the nanny take the kids to the park 
when it's when it's warm so we can still have us time um but i mean it's it's fun i think Mm -hmm. Uh, especially now even we've we've got three kids uh the first two are four years apart and uh the last one is about 18 months Mm -hmm. younger than than the middle but they're all kind of getting to that stage where you can do the same thing with all three of them at the same time enjoying yeah and, and so it's just it's just fun like we'll we're homebodies i think um i would say by nature more so by force just because you know the pandemic and everything but if jessica and i are in the living room they're they're all around us there's no <laughs> getting away from them and they will find you and but then there's times where we'll all be in the same space but everybody's doing their own thing and i'll just look up from my phone and just watch one of the girls like scroll on their ipad or or playing with their dolls and it's just like yo this is this is the greatest thing ever mm-hmm. so i think when they're young and they're and you know it's maybe your first kid and you're kind of learning how to fly the plane in the air it's it's stressful and you and your partner have to like you know really be locked in with one another and give each other grace because you're not going to be the perfect partner um when kids come around you're you're going to have times where you where you stumble um but you make it through that and i think it gets really fun like around the late toddler stages mm-hmm. i think it's 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 awesome it's they're expensive <laughs> <And> they, <laughs> they always getting more expensive yeah they always want stuff or like need stuff like but. and conveniently when somebody else is getting something like just or i go to the fridge all of a sudden everybody wants juice <laughs> or if i go to cook dinner everybody needs something everybody yeah, needs something but no, i think it's i think it's great i would say i've had this thought i think kids definitely depending on where your marriage is kids definitely add to the equation i can't remember what form of math it is but there's and maybe it's algebra where you have to balance both sides of the equation. Mm. And I feel like kids do that. They, it's like they take away, like they suck from your marriage. They are leeches and they will pull your energy, your time, your just where you're just like, I'm not, I, I got nothing left for you. Cause I gave it all to them. Yeah. But then there's another side where they, they add to it. They enhance it. They're they're They just bring so much flavor to your already existing relationship where like you'll look and it's a lot of times it's the quiet moments like you you reference like someone's asleep and you look at that their face and you see your partner's face um or someone says something and you realize that they only know this phrase because they hear so they hear you know a grown-up saying it or just like even though they're all still babies looking and seeing the baby in their face and then i think even just like memories going through old pictures and 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 just for me it's like we built this like i'm not in construction i've i've never truly built something but this is something i've built like the this relationship these people and then also like looking towards the future and and seeing the future that we're establishing for them so i definitely think you know i'm i i do wonder sometimes like what if we didn't have kids where would we be like Mm. would we have moved would we you know be gallivanting the french riviera like what who would we be would we even still be together like who's to say that without kids we we would have a common bond anymore maybe we would grow apart um i mean there are some couples they have kids and then like that crumbles them too so you just never know but in it for me it's the quiet moments like that when everyone's in bed at the end of the night you know you're tired but it's just like we did this we built this we made all these people and yes they're expensive and they're loud and they dance and they are messy and they never clean up after themselves and they seemingly think everything you cook is spicy even when it's not they're still just these wonderful little human beings that have 
a whole lifetime of potential in them. And we get to be a part of that. So, so yeah, I think it's, it's great. It's exhausting, but it's great. Agreed. Um, Meglulu. Hey! It's your girl. It's my girl. Um, asked, if you think the vibes on, if vibes are different here than in the last week or two, different here in the last week or two than they have been. I, I don't think it's intentional. I, I don't know that you can take, you can base anything off of the last month of a year of the year. Mm. December is a very weird month. Right. Um, regardless of your race, creed, religion, whatever, December is, is the holiday season is a heavy time. Yes. And I think it, it changes people. It, it overwhelms people. And, you know, you're, you're thinking of gifts, you're thinking of gatherings, you've got to cook, you've got to clean, you've got, I mean, you just got so much that you have to do. You have time off, but you still don't really have freedom because there's, places you have to be people you have to please so i won't say that the vibe has been off i do think that a lot of people are in reflective mode i think a lot of people are like i need to take a step back or i need to say more or i'm just going through this and i'm i'm gonna vocalize it mm. but i wouldn't say i think a lot of it and this is just me speaking from myself is maybe people are just more comfortable now Mm. I think guards are coming down. Um, you're not as no, I think the true test is when like politics start being discussed, but and we are in election year. Yeah. So that's going to be interesting here. But, um, I, I do think that people are just getting comfortable with being their authentic selves and they mm. are displaying that. I'm having a bad day. I, I can't bring to the threads community what I'd normally bring. I'm, oh, excuse me. I'm having a great day. Like I'm be bubbly and let you know. So I wouldn't say the vibe is different from my perspective. I know there've been moments of Twitter influx mm. and then everyone Lee, I don't know what's going on. Like they come and then they go. Um, but from my perspective, I haven't noticed um, a change in the vibe. So I want to take this opportunity to um, address. Is this the mayoral mayoral address? <laughs> that uh, to say that I miss freak time. And in that regard, yeah, the vibes are a little different Yeah, because it's, it's not the same, but I don't know if the question was in terms of NBA threads or just threads in general. Mm. So I'll, I'll answer it. Um, I'll, I'll answer the question that pertaining to, to, to both. I think with NBA threads, like, like I said, it's, it's, it's a little different with freak time gone, mm -hmm. especially just for, you know, our interactions, obviously always memeing me <laughs> screenshotting. It was screenshotting me, but um, not like they used to clip a lot of the Bucks and the Spurs games, like and people who were like there are people who look forward to that, mm -hmm. and you know it's not there anymore. So that uh, that's that kind of sucks, and I say that somewhat selfishly because whatever happened or was happening uh freak time felt it was best that they step away for the betterment of themselves mm -hmm. so you always want somebody to take care of themselves first Absolutely. so that's not me saying freak should have <laughs> you know continued to be um involved in something that was a net negative on their life i'm just saying i i just miss them mm -hmm. <laughs> this is all i'm saying so yeah i think it's i think that has some impact on the nba threads community um, again, you know, you've got more people coming in. I do think there's an element of people kind of, kind of being comfortable. I'm seeing a lot more, uh, 
chippy interactions Mm -hmm. and people are like kind of sniping snipping at one another the sass is real um i mean i've I've even done it yo especially with y'all celtics haters i've even done it a couple of times um like with the whole john moran thing and uh (laughs) the dunk on dunk on Wimby. Mm. i I was more having fun because you know me i'm actually a troll at heart i've actually held back a lot I mean, um, I've made it very clear that I'm a troll. <laughs> yeah, so I came in there trolling, and I'm not gonna stop. So, um, but yeah, I think it's I think it's changed, but that's normal, right? It's it's, it's a growing it's space, a growing yeah. platform. The algorithm is is evolving, so there's going to be periods of adjustments. I think the one thing that we can can do in terms of NBA threads is just continue to find each other, comment on each other, and comment on each other's things, and just engage. And continue to be as welcoming to people who are coming into the site as as we always have been. Mm -hmm. And everybody who has that thing that they do, just continue to do it. Like Sarah's going to clip Timberwolves games. Uh, You know, I'll, if I'm awake, (laughs) I'll clip whatever, you know, game I'm watching. Or at least just provide a couple of highlight clips. And then, you know, try to jump in on everybody else's posts. And, you know, everybody who who has that thing that they bring to the community, just continue to do it. And I think eventually, you know, things will, will settle out threads in general. Um, yeah, there's like a lot of weird stuff <laughs> in my, in my for you feed, like a lot of engagement bait type stuff. Oh, yeah. And I understand that people Am are I saying engagement bait. No. Okay. No, it would tell me, right? I would. Okay. Yeah. Cause that's not, I'm not, you're not I'm not desperate no, for not. engagement. No, because you get all your followers from me. <laughs> I was just playing. I was just playing, kind of. So, kind of. Be, I'm just playing. So petty. I'm just playing. So people uh, like, like on Twitter, if you saw a stupid take, you would quote it and then you would dunk on it, right? On Threads, because people have most people have come to threads to get away from that Twitter behavior. Mm -hmm. Doing that is sort of like not what you want. That's not what you want to do. You don't want to quote and dunk on somebody like take a screenshot and then dunk on the, on the take. So I think what's happening is people are coming in, they're seeing all these things that they hate and they'll comment like, Hey, why are you doing this? And then that just continues to feed the for you algorithm. So that's how you get just like a lot of wild shit. And um, I'm someone who lives strictly in the for you. Mm-hmm. I don't even go over to my following. That there's another. That's why there are people that I don't realize I'm not following. Yeah, because I see them so much. Yeah, that I and I'm following and, them. And up until like the last couple of weeks, I would still see everyone who I was following in my for you because that's the kind of stuff mm-hmm. that I want. It's the kind of basketball, NBA threads content I want to see. So those people would still show up, but now. You know, there's just, I don't know, there's no telling what I'm going to get. But again, it's, it's different, I think, uh, in, in both instances, both NBA threads and in threads as a whole. But I think that's normal. And, you know, if people are very, very clear about how they curate their timelines on threads and they'll block, mute, and, and keep it moving. I've yet to block or mute anyone. Yeah, I, I just I just scroll. I've I've muted some things, some people. Um, I haven't. I've blocked one person, one account, but I'm, I'm almost certain it it's not a legitimate person. Mm. Uh, but I'm not someone who can't like consume differing opinions, even if they're like extreme, extremely yeah, different better, from. You're better at that than I am. That's from why. mine, I'll just look at it and be like, oh, really. And then just keep keep scrolling. But uh Yes, it's it's definitely different. But we need to go because our baby's awake. One of our kids is awake and we gotta get her to This bed. only happens when we try to do stuff. Yeah. So so, so to answer our previous question. Yeah, this is also what life is like with kids when you try to record a podcast and they wake up. Mm-hmm. So uh Thank you to all the NBA threads and all the NBA and all the threads people in general. I'm pretty sure it was only NBA threads people who sent questions. Sorry, we couldn't get all of them. 
Um, maybe we'll make this like a regular thing or maybe a bi week bi episode thing where, uh, where we, uh, we take questions, we take like the last 20 minutes or whatever, answer questions. But, uh, thank you for everyone who submitted and thank you for watching. Obviously go ahead and subscribe. If you haven't hit the like button. So like, uh, like on threads, our episode will show up when other people are scrolling YouTube. We're also on Apple, Spotify, uh, YouTube music and tune in. So uh, that's the episode for this week. Hope everybody had a safe and happy new year. We will catch you guys next week. See you on threads. Peace. Bye. Done with some grow pains. Yeah. Hey. Hey. I done came way too far. Can stop me now. I done came way too far. Can stop me now. I done came way too far. Can stop me now. I done came way too far. Can stop me now. Can stop me now. Stop me now, yeah, I done came way too far to stop me now